Hey Alex, so here's the video. Um, I'm going to show you how to take something that you started to build inside of Second Life and uh, bring it into Blender to go ahead and cut doors and do all that good stuff with. Um, it, it works out just so much quicker and it's really, really uh, mathematically even and everything. I love it. So we have the simple build. I got my base, my walls, all that stuff, right? So I'm going to right click, uh, click more, click more again, click on save as and do it as a colada. Nothing selected here save as and uh, let's call this um building eight yes building eight done a few test runs all right we exported that now let's go into our blender this is the load screen with the box just hit delete once and then click all right file import we're going to import this it's on my desktop it's building 8 dae over here nothing selected import model all right so we have our model here so you'll notice over here on the left, let me drag this down. These are all the different little components. And as I select them, you'll notice they're highlighted on the right hand so I can identify which is which. We're going to work with this wall for now. However, before we do anything with this, let's go into edit mode down here. Look at the topology. That's why it's so heavy. It's got 18 triangles per face, nine boxes per face. It only needs one box and two triangles per face. So we're going to decimate this whole model first. Yay. So what you do is go up to the very top one. It'll be called Prim Zero. And on this bar here, go over to Add Modifier. And we're going to do one modifier on all of these. It's going to be called Decimate. Now, make it only on the first one for now. Click on Planner here. And for Angle Limit, make that 80. And over here, you can select Sharp. All right. Now go to the very next one and I'll hold down the control key and while holding it continue to select the remainder of them to manually select all of these that don't have the modifier and then lastly while still holding shift then apply click on that last one and now bring your mouse over the model hold down control and press L and you want to link the modifiers here so click on modifiers and notice the little wrench is now next to all of them now select only the first one again and you can go through and decimate all these models so this brings down the topology on all of them which is amazing this uh, greatly reduces the land impact of the object and when bringing it back in um, you know you can expect for the level of detail here to definitely like chop it down by more than half <clears throat> all right and then once this is done we're going to decide what wall that we want to start working with to create a door or a window through. And it's relatively quick and easy. All right, so everything's been solidified. Let me select here and go back into edit mode and look at that. It's a nice box on all sides now. So we have a lot less topology we don't need. Now we're going to create our own edges so that we can select a face and delete it out and make a hollow. All right. <coughs> object mode all right so what we want to do is on any of these walls that we're going to be working and only those walls we're going to be working so this one here is prim 15 we're going to do an additional modifier first so for hit this one we're going to add a modifier called solidify and for this you want to make thickness 1.0 you want to make the clamp 1.0 and then you can apply all right now what this did is it allowed us to be able to create an edge loop all the way around it and uh, to create our tic-tac-toe so we can remove faces that we want to make go through. Um, however, it does create an artifact where there are multiples of this object within itself now. So you only use that solidify on the object you're going to be working because part of working it will also incorporate removing any extra components. All right, so let's begin. Now what we're going to do is go into edit mode and we're going to put those edge loops in. And to begin doing that, hold down Control and press R. And then move the mouse around until you see, yep, over here you see the uh, horizontal. Move it around until you see the, uh, the vertical. Now when you do see the vertical, you have two options here. You can scroll up on your mouse button and get multiples, right? And you can left click once and then move left and right to decide where you want to place them. And then left click again. And then choose options on the left. Or... What I'm going to show you here is just how to do it individually. I'm going to left click 
two times. One, two. After I've left clicked two times, I see these arrows and I have options down here. I want to switch this to sharp and I want to make sure that clamp is enabled. And now, lastly, I'm going to move this to where I want it. When I release, that's where it's going to be. Okay. Now we're going to notice two of these options now changed after it was placed. We're going to add the next one. Control R and try to get it so I see the little thing horizontally somewhere. There we go. Left, left. I'm going to make that sharp. Clamp is done and move it once to where I want it. If you mess up on this, Control Z to go back so it's fresh. So there's no errors. Excellent. We're going to do the next one. Control R, except this time I want it to go vertical. There we go. Left click, left click. And go over to here to sharp. Clamp is done. And confirm on release is unchecked. Now move it down to here. That's fine. Okay, control R one more time. Okay, left click, left click. Go over to here, make that sharp. Everything's the same. And slide that up. Okay, and now go into object mode when you're done. It's always a good idea to get out of edit and then go back into object for the next thing you want to do. Okay, back into edit mode. Now down here, right here, when in edit mode, these options will be available. And you have, uh, this here is not grayed. You could click it to make it gray, but it's not grayed. Um, face select, edge select, and vertex select. We want to now be on face select. And notice how you have a little white dot a uh, little black dot on all these faces, that lets you know you can select them. However, sometimes you might have difficulty when selecting a face, it's not selecting what you wanted. That's where you have to zoom in and make sure you collect that little dot. Now, these are right here. We have our outer shell, but we have little inner shells too we're gonna have to remove. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna delete this face on this side by pressing the delete key and faces. Okay, and then we're going to go to the other side, because remember, right now, this is the outside of the shell. Um, if you're not able to get a good view on the door, you can hold Control, I'm sorry, hold Shift, and then B. And this box that you draw here will be your point of view. When I release, now I have a better point of view. Okay, now I'm going to select that face, press Delete, and Faces. All right, now believe it or not, we do actually have the doorway going through. But because a Second Life's object in the Solidify, it created multiples. So now to select those multiples, we only select inside the hollow spot. So you can right click and notice how it's selecting the whole wall in there. Right. It's because it's all inside. Slide all that up. Right click inside there again. Slide it all up. Keep doing it until it's gray in the middle. And we'll repeat it for the other side until we actually see through it. All right, now the other side. And uh, when you get used to this, it'll be really quick. You'll be like, oh, okay, cool. So we've got that there, and we need to get rid of these components here. So just press the B button, and this lets you make a selection to select everything in the box now. Remember, we're in face select mode, so hit Delete, Faces, and repeat again. Press B, highlight here, press Delete, Faces, and repeat again. Press B, highlight, Delete, Faces. Now we want to get our edges. So B again, select all this. However, we need to be in Edge Select Mode. Edge Select Mode. <laughs> Now we have those edges selected, you see? Press delete, edges. Do it again with edge select. All right, we got rid of all that artifacting. All right, cool. Uh, let's go back, let's stay in edge. Stay in edge select. The only other thing that we need to do, I'm gonna hold down shift and press B so I can get a better view here with this box. Okay, the only thing we need to do now here is basically fill this in. And we're in edge select. So what we can do is we can right click one of these edges, holding down shift, right click the one next to it, and now hold down control and press E. And you make edge face. Boop. Just 
like that. <laughs> right click here, then hold down shift and right click there. Control E, make edge face. Right click here, shift hold, right click here. Control E, make edge face. And right click here, hold down shift and right click there. Control E, make edge face. And last but not least, oh, we did the one on the top. All right, so there you go. You've got it. <laughs> okay, one last thing I want to show you though. If you make something intricate that's going to have a weaving of boxes and things, you're going to create extra boxes you don't need. You don't need three, six, seven, eight other boxes on here, right? So we're in edge select mode. Here's what you can do. You can select this one, hold down shift, and select this one. Press the delete key again, but this time go down to dissolve edges. Now those edges are gone. You can click here, and you can click here, and do the same thing. And I held down shift to select them both. Hit delete, and dissolve edges. Now it's clean. You can do the same thing to the other side as well, to make sure that it's exactly the way that you want. <clears throat> dissolve edges. Dissolve edges. Dissolve edges. Yeah, that's good. So we cleaned it up. You know, no unnecessary verts that we don't need. I mean, um, edges. So that's basically how you go ahead and do it. And then I'll bring it into Second Life now. All right, so now that we have that, we also know how to clean edges up. We do dissolve edges uh, versus being able to actually delete faces and edges. Always being mindful of whether we're in face select mode or edge select mode for the operation we're doing. But that's it now. So we're going to bring this back into Second Life now, okay? Um, so what we want to do is go into object mode and, again, select that very first one. And you can hold down shift and... I manually select all this stuff because I never have a problem when I do that. So I've manually selected all the parts of my model and now I'm going to export it. You can do other steps where you UV map it and things like that. Um, that's totally possible but here I'm just going to show you how to bring it back in <coughs> as mesh into Second Life. So we're going to export, and we're going to again export as a DAE. It's the only kind of file you can upload into Second Life. Don't choose Avastar if you have it there. Just default Colada. Excellent. Over here, make sure that selection only is checked. Outside of that, you don't need to touch anything else. Just make sure selection only is checked. And desktop, let's call this output 3. Okay? That way you can see it. Output 3. Sweet. All right, we've got our output three. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the beta grid because it's free to upload in there, right? And then we're going to go ahead and upload this, and then you can see what it looks like in NSL. Okay. And by this manner, you can make any kind of multitude of cuts and removals that you want. Um, and the precision and whatnot totally makes it worth it to fill in you know, the, the faces on the edges and stuff. I, I don't mind doing that. Okay. Build, upload, mesh model. Oops. Build, upload, mesh model. Output 3. Open. And there's our model here. All right. We're going to just call this output 3. Um, generate weights and fees. And look, land impact of 10. Beautiful. Upload. <coughs> yeah, and 32 to upload. That's good for building, too. All right, output 3. Let's res it. Boof. Show me. Okay. And there we go. We have our doorway. And it really is that easy, and you know the topology of it has been reduced. It's all proper and well. 
Um, this is all one object too, so it can be textured. Um, there is one limitation though that I've seen. I, I haven't been able to, when I do this, to apply a texture only to one face of the mesh. It seems to want to apply it to the entire mesh. Um, but I don't really mind that because there's there's things I do in the inside and outside anyway. But as a base for the building to work with, this is perfect. And you can do more intricate stuff if you want to. Um, you can clean up any model by dissolving edges in it and bringing it back in. Um, and the decimate automatically takes care of, of everything in there. But this is it. So that's how to make these cuts in Blender and stuff like that. And remember, when you're making the cut and it's still purple before you left click two times, you can scroll your mouse button up and it creates multiples and even across it and same thing with down. So you can create crisscross grids. One last thing is um, remember that when you do the first left click, you do have an option of moving it up and down. However, just do the two left clicks and make the selection on the left and then move it around if it's a single one. If it's going to be multiples, then position it before doing the second click. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you have some success with it too if you decide to try it. And thank you for watching.